This is The Issue, and I am the Ghetto Man. Well, today we're going to be discussing uh, current events, so that'll be the issue for today. I picked out uh, four articles uh, off the Internet this week, or I should say in the last few days, and uh, that I thought that, that I could go ahead and put the old constitutional twist on that. So we can take a look at it and see what's being said and then apply the Constitution and see uh, how that works out. Anyway, the first one is there's been a bit of controversy on the Internet about Trump um, basically calling the United States Constitution archaic. Um, actually... Uh, once again, I, the reason why I want to point this out is because the lamestream media and the prostitutes seem to think that uh, when they hear somebody say something, that they can just hang whatever they want on it, and then that makes it so. Well, that isn't the case. Anyway, they're claiming that uh, you know Trump is hates the Constitution, and I'm not going to you know say whether he does or he doesn't, because he has done some constitutional violations that, in my opinion. Uh, warrant him removed from office, okay, and that is the, you know, attacking any country uh, without a declaration of war by an act of Congress. He's not a dictator. He's not an emperor. He can't make that decision, and uh, and if he does, he's in violation of his oath of office, and he's in violation of the United States Constitution, and uh, he should be prosecuted for it, just like anybody else who breaks the law anywhere in this country. So anyway, uh, they um, what they what they're trying to say is that he uh, you know is attacking the Constitution. So I went ahead and I went ahead and found an article that quotes exactly what uh, President uh, Trump says, and um, I think it's kind of interesting because when you take a look at it and then apply the Constitution to it, it says an entirely different thing. Anyway, he says, um, "Let me grab my glasses here because." This close-up stuff, I seem to be blind. Anyway, he says, uh, you look at the rules of the Senate, even the rules of the House, but the rules of the Senate and some of the things that uh, you have to go through, it's, it's really a bad thing for the country, in my opinion. They are archaic rules. And maybe at some point we're going to have to take uh, those rules on because for the good of the nation, things are going to have to be different. You cannot, excuse me, you can't go through a process like this. It's not fair. It forces you to make a uh, make bad decisions. I mean, you're really forced to doing things that you would normally not do, uh, do except uh, for these archaic rules. He says, I think you know the filibuster concept is uh, not a good one. Uh, it's not a good concept to start off with. But if you're going to have a filibuster, uh, let somebody stand up for 20 hours and talk and, and do what they have to do, even if they're reading comic books uh, to everybody, let them do it. But honestly, the whole, we have so many bad concepts in our rules and is and it's forcing bad decisions. I really see, I really see this. I've seen this over the years where bad decisions are made, decisions that nobody wanted are made because of archaic rules. And that's something that I think we're going to have to change. Okay, now when I read this, first of all, uh, I, I, nothing in uh, what uh, President Trump said uh, it deals with changing the Constitution or anything. I was just talking about the Senate, the rules of the Senate and the rules of the House, okay? Now, those are not the same things as a, the mandates for the Senate by the Constitution. When, when you set up the Senate... Yeah, they set up certain rules, and they're usually uh, parliamentary rules. Uh, I think it's Roberts on, on parliamentary procedures, normally what's adopted. But these rules are something that the Senate and the House, if they want to, they can go ahead and rewrite and change whatever's going to make, it, uh, make uh, their job uh, run smoother. So we're not talking about him say attacking the Constitution. Where he's talking about t attacking a set of rules that can be changed by the Senate any time. And if he doesn't like him, he has the right not to like him. The Senate's the one that's going to decide what those rules are, whether you like it or not. So you know, I, I don't see anything other than him saying, you know, what we need to do is uh, maybe change some rules so that we can get uh, the job done quicker and whatever. And I'm not saying I agree with them. I'm just saying that that's what that's all about. 
And then he goes in and talks about the filibuster and uh, how he doesn't like that. But the filibuster, you know, really goes back to the inception of our Constitution. It was put there uh, by our founders so that when there was a debate in Senate and there was something that really needed to be uh, discussed and something of great uh, importance or grave importance to the United States, they didn't want people to act hastily. So what they did is they would have somebody come in and uh, just start talking and just keep on talking to, to delay the vote. And then people's, you know, calmed down a little bit. They started thinking about a little bit more. This guy forced them to kind of back off and, uh, and uh, you know, you know, take a look at what's going right in front of you before you make a bad decision. So filibuster is not a bad idea. Uh, it, uh, it, it's, yes, it does frustrate, uh, uh, you know, from a, any measure or bill coming to a vote. But the thing is, is that's what it was designed to do. You want to frustrate people. You don't want them voting on everything every time. You need people to think about it for a little bit. They need to discuss it. The representatives need to discuss it with their constituents. They need to come back to us and say what we think about that. Well, anyway, that's uh, just a touch of filibuster thing because uh, Trump did mention that. But there are some um, uh, tweets here from uh, Joe Scarborough. You know, he has that uh, television program called The Morning Joe or something like that. And he's supposed to be a Republican and all this stuff. And he's out here tweeting away, and he's thinking, he's saying, it's wrong for what Trump's saying. He says, it's Madison Jefferson's checks and balances. He says, the separation of power. It, frustr- it frustrates would-be tyrants. Uh, it's, it's perfect now and blah, blah, blah. But see, he, he doesn't understand that what Trump is saying is that it's a set of rules. Even when you set up the court system, the courts have a sets of rules. And then they even have local rules. And then even the judges even throw in some of their rules. So you might be looking at three different rules. And these rules are constantly evolving and changing. So what Scarborough is saying, talking about checks and balances, I have no idea because we're not talking about that. We're just talking about Trump doesn't think the rules, the rules that can be changed by the Senate or the House, um, these rules can be changed at any time. And why not discuss them if they're if their the rules are a problem? And if they're not, well, then then we'll leave them as such. But then Scarborough tweets again. He says, uh, the more uh, you read this, the more offensive it becomes. The Constitution is not archaic. Well, once again, Trump didn't say anything about the Constitution. He was talking about rules, not the constitutional law. He says, uh, but it is... Uh, repellent to would-be tyrants, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm thinking, well, here he goes. Now Scarborough is mentioning that this is what he's saying is he wants to, uh, Trump wants to change the Constitution. Well, that's not what he said. But Scarborough, who works for the lamestream media and is definitely a prostitute, he's going to go ahead and he's going to, He's going to twist this into something that it's not. And this man was a member of Congress for from 94 to 2002, I believe. Um, and I, I, he may even be a, a, an attorney. I don't know for sure. It seems that, that I heard that. And for him to say something like this is a deliberate attempt to mislead the public. That is a, a deliberate attempt. Then he goes on again. He says, uh, your party, party has a monopoly on power. How clueless to be uh, political impotent with such an advantage. Don't blame the America's Constitution. So once again, he goes ahead and he, he tries to you know, blame uh, Trump for attacking the Constitution when he's not attacking the Constitution at all. He's just attacking some rules that, uh, that uh, the Senate you know, makes, like I said, parliamentary rules procedure. And he's upset with some of that. Maybe there, maybe there is a problem there. Maybe there's not. I don't know. But I just wanted to point out how quickly uh, the lamestream media and people like Joe Scarborough will sit there and take something that, that is, we're talking about just rules here and turn it into a constitutional crisis. You know, what a butthead. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Uh, here's an interesting one. Uh, the headline says, uh, Breaking. Trump is being sued. Uh, son of the great boxing legend Muhammad Ali is suing President Trump due to being temporarily detained two different times at airports. And the New York Post reports that the son of the boxing great Muhammad Ali now wants to duke it out with President Trump in court. And, uh, and it basically goes on that when uh, 
the, the son of Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, I don't see his name in here, so I, I apologize for not knowing that. Um, Muhammad Ali Jr. <laughs> well, what's the matter? What's the matter with me? Anyway, uh, he, we were talking about when Trump first uh, initiated the uh, what they called the traveling bans, and all he was doing was just... Uh, uh, you know, enforcing a, a a law that had already been passed by Congress. In fact, it was the law was uh, asked to be passed from the Obama administration. You know, naming seven uh, countries that were known for terrorist acts. So uh, Obama used it twice, and uh, the first time uh, Trump uh, st went to use it, then the, the courts tried to stop or said they were going to stop him from doing it. And I had uh, done a little report on that, and I said, well, you know, th that would be a violation of separation of powers if they told the president he couldn't do what he was hired to do based under the Constitution to protect our borders from invasion. And uh, anybody that comes across that border illegally is invading. I don't care wh what you want to call it. So that was one of his jobs. And he did have congressional uh, a law passed by Congress that even authorized him to do what he did. And so what the courts did is said, no, we're not going to let you do your job. We're going to take over the uh, executive branch and so on. And what I said is that, you know, until there's an issue in controversy, somebody has been damaged by what Trump did. Then that and then we can take a look at the law and as it applies to that individual, not as a, a, a whole of people, because anybody that's not a citizen of this country has absolutely no right to come in here. They have to, when they do, they have to go through a process to get in here. If they don't, then it's done illegally and they are deported or they are jailed. Oh, well, you know, excuse me, you know, tried in jail. Anyway, the uh, if. What uh, Muhammad Ali Jr. is saying is true, that there are some, they stopped him for some violation of his religious beliefs or any um, uh, uh, right, privilege, or immunity that was um, guaranteed under the United States Constitution. He'd have an, an action, a civil right action under Title 42, Section 1983. And uh, then if he can prove that the uh, law as it was applied to him violated his rights, then he would be entitled to some sort of uh, compensation. Okay, so we'll see where that goes. But this is what I was talking about. Until something like this happens, there is no issue in controversy. And as long as there's no issue in controversy, the courts have absolutely no right to review it and apply any law because there's nothing there for them to review. All right, moving on to uh, the next one is uh, our big favorite here, uh, Maxine Waters. I, I really think that her and Nancy Pelosi, they've just, first of all, they, they're, they're idiots to begin with. Complete idiots. I don't know how, why people vote somebody in that is a known complete idiot in the office, but they do. But now they're getting really old, and they're uh, becoming super, super senile. And they're starting to say things that just are completely off the wall. And, I mean, this is something you'd think of it, that maybe someone who had Alzheimer's and was wandering around aimlessly through the city would say. Anyway, uh, well, what she's saying is that uh, Trump is a racist for wanting immigration laws enforced. Where do I start with that one? Well, first of all, who in the hell made or makes the uh, immigration laws anyway. Who does that? Doesn't Congress do that? Isn't Congress the one that created the immigration laws? And now Congress creates the immigration laws. There's a legislative branch. They legislate the law. And then this law is handed to the executive branch, which is the one who does law application, enforces the law, right? And so... Here's what the, the, the Congress says that the that needs to be done when it comes to the borders, and the president goes ahead and does that, does exactly what the law that Congress passed, and that makes him a racist. Now, do you see how stupid this woman is? She's a complete idiot, and uh, honestly, I just can't believe for the the sake of me, how in the world this woman has ever ended up in Congress. I just don't get it. But anyway, that's that's what we ha that's what you have representing you. Someone is a, is a racist when that someone 
enforces a law that this someone, Waters, was involved in the passing of. Now, that's an idiot. So I guess if you, if, 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 as far as she's concerned, if uh, when it comes to immigration, that uh, even the laws that she passed, passed, if he does that, if she, if he even follows that, he's a he's a racist. Now, see, do you, now they see why I, when I take a look at things from a constitutional standpoint, that's one of the reasons I'm doing these shows is I want to make sure that that you know as many people who want to, because I can't make anybody listen to these shows and I can't make anybody you know uh, you know turn on their brain and use you know. Uh, uh, use something that gray matter between the ears, stimulate it so that it, you know, it does something more than just stares at a uh, an iPhone or a smartphone or the TV or a computer screen. You know, you if if you really want to know what's going on and really understand how stupid these people are, how in the world they get, could get into office, how in the world people sit there like uh, Joe Scarborough and you know try to stir up a mess. You know, there's no reason to stir up one, but he's going to. Instead of looking at every issue honestly, whether it's a uh, you, never whether it's a left or right side of the Dem or Republic Nazi Party, you know, you just apply the Constitution and you'll see and get your answers. This is why I'm I'm actually enjoying this. I'm going to pick out you know any article I can that uh, that. Um, you know, that points out, you know, how ridiculous uh, a situation is or how they're violating your rights, how I'm violating my rights and how that's so frustrating to sit there and listen to these people. Now, here's another one. This is a CEO of uh, Google, Smith, and the, and the headline reads, uh, we're not arguing for censorship. We're arguing just to take it off the page. Wow. You know, I don't think that I've ever in my life have I ever heard such doublespeak. What he said is that we're not arguing for censorship, we're arguing for censorship. Now he's this is a this is a CEO of of Google. And he is sitting here talking to you like you're a complete moron. And he's using doublespeak. He's telling you the same thing twice, and somehow you're supposed to believe that that's a different thing. Okay, I'm going to read on here. It says, uh, it says he says, Google is not going to censor uh, their search results. They're just going to, uh, going to take search results off the page to essentially have you not see it, which is censorship. Okay, now. He goes on to say, he says uh, in the video, uh, and I don't have the video here, and it's really not that important because I can read it to you. From March 23rd, that's just uh, now going viral. Uh, you can look it up just on on the Internet. Former uh, Google CEO Eric Schmidt, or excuse me, former CEO Eric Schmidt, was asked by Fox Business uh, Maria uh, Barton Morrow, uh, Barton Momo, I can't even say her name, how they uh, plan to deal with extremist content. And Eric Smith responded by mixing in fake news with extremist things and suggesting that the computer algorithms will determine what is true. And he says, my view on most of this sort of extremist things, as well as fake news in general, is that it essentially uh, a ranking problem. Ranking problem? Now, who is this guy? He's a head of a co- uh, he was a head of a corporation, a corporation which we all know that the uh, government uh, goes in and, uh, and makes deals with to give them information without probable cause or search warrant. Okay, so it's a ranking problem. Then he says, "Well, we're very good at detecting uh, what's the most relevant and what's the least relevant. Who he determine what's relevant, not relevant." This goes right to the core of free speech, and we're using a corporation with government sanction to allow this sort of thing, okay? I will determine what's relevant for me, and I will determine what is not relevant to me. I will take a look at every situ- everything that I look at, and I will take it for a grain of salt. I will research it. When I find it to be false, I will reject it. If I find it to be true, I will move on to other things. I don't need a corporation working with the government. Now, what is that? What happens when you have a corporation when you work for the government? That's called fascism. 
when the corporations run this show. And this is what he's saying. We, the corporation Google, are going to decide for you what it is that you can and cannot see. He said it should be possible for computers to detect malicious, misleading, and incorrect information. Well, who's to decide what is malicious? I don't want him to decide what's malicious. I'll decide what's malicious. And what is, what is he going to decide is misleading? I'll take a look at everything. Well, I think I'm smart enough. I can use a little reason, logic, and common sense, you know, some little critical thinking here, and I can take a look and see if something mis is misleading or not. And if it is misleading, I'll tell my friends what I think about it. And uh, if it's not misleading, then I'll share it with somebody. And hopefully if I've missed something, someone down the line will catch that. But we, the people, we have a right to all this information, and we have a right to decide. What, what for this, it's incorrect or misleading. Well, what about, he goes on to say, yeah, it's incorrect information. Who's to determine what's correct and incorrect? If, if I'm reading from a, a Supreme Court case and, and Google doesn't like it, does that mean that it's incorrect information? Well, that's what they're doing, isn't it? They're taking, the, they're taking the high road saying, we will decide. Big brother, we will decide. Corporation working with the government. Fascism. There's your fascism. Where's your uh, anti-fa or whatever they call themselves? Where are they when it comes to this? I don't see them out there, you know, uh, protesting against uh, this former uh, Google CEO who's out here saying he's going to, they're going to decide what you can and see, what you can hear, and, uh, and they're going to go ahead and censor it. I mean, the very definition of censor, it means to um, examine a book or a video officially and suppress unacceptable parts of it. That's just what this guy said he's going to do. But he tells you we're going to censor something but we're going to censor something. He sits there and tries to tell you one thing that he's, do, he's going to do. He's not going to censor something, but then he turns around and tells you he's going to. And you're supposed to sit back and say, oh, I get that because I'm a dumb sheeple that uh, went to the government fool system and brushed my teeth with fluoride every day and, uh, you know, uh, uh, listened to my uh, professor who is mentally ill that thinks that there's more than two, different, two genders and that communism, which has never worked, is the greatest thing since white sliced bread this is double speak it's exactly what george Orwell was talking in the book 1984 if anybody's had the pleasure to read that we've gone so far beyond that if you read it you're going to think it's it's mild in comparison to what you're living in now and since we have discussed fascism and fascism is a big topic and it really is because uh, you hear it from this anti-fag group. They're going around, and anybody that disagrees with their, uh, their you know, uh, radical Marxist ideas, are they call them fascist. When in, in reality, all fascism is, all it is, is when corporations and the state merge. And then they use the power of the state to enforce what the corporations want to do. And since our United States government... Uh, uh, can't suppress our First Amendment rights. They think that what they can do through some contractual agreement with Google, that somehow you can they can contract your rights away and do it through uh, uh, contract uh, as instead of through you know the government just denying you that right. Well, that's not the fact. When it comes to corporations, and uh, this this applies every single time, corporations are always incorporated for the benefit of the, of the public. The state is a partner with the corporation always because they're the ones that can revoke the charter and they can do that whenever they decide that the corporation is not keeping up their end of the bargain. They're literally, the government is a partner with every corporation that is as that has been uh, uh, created in this country. It just, somewhere there is government who's, who, uh, created it, and it was done for the benefit of the people. Now, a corporation cannot, cannot violate somebody's constitutionally protected rights, nor can they sit there and request, require them to, to um, waiver those rights through contract. Not in the inalienable rights. Your rights to free speech. They can't do that. 
Your right to keep and bear arms. No, you have a right to defend yourself. They cannot contract away, and they cannot do so because they are corporations. They are there for the benefit of the public. And when they do, they violate Title 42, Section 1983 of the United States Code, which basically says that if any person, corporation, anyone, and they even say the corporations are persons now, violates somebody, any, any right, privilege, or immunity guaranteed by the United States Constitution. See, that goes to rights, inalienable rights, rights, privileges, or immunities. There's, it's more than just constitutionally protected rights. There's civil rights involved in there. Those are created by the government. And, and different things that, that uh, uh, people are immune from different things because of their, their status. And if somebody, somebody, including a corporation, violates any of those, those things, then you have a cause of action under Title 42, Section 1983 of the United States Code. It's a Civil Rights Act is basically what it is. So, you know, someone's out here, you know, saying they don't like you because you're black. They don't like you because you're a Christian. They don't like you because you're a Jew. They don't like you, you know, because you're a homosexual. They don't like you because whatever. You see, the thing is, is that, you know, if you're being denied a right, uh, that is guaranteed, unprotected, and inalienable right, the corporations can't come in and do that. And this is what they're trying to do. This is what Google is doing, if you take and look at it from a constitutional standpoint. So like they're trying to, through private contract, somehow avoid uh, the, the First Amendment or any amendment, anything in the Bill of Rights, for that matter. And then they're going to take charge of what it is that you can see and cannot see, and they're going to censor things that you want to share with somebody else that that's, that's part of your network or, or the Internet itself. But when they pull this stunt here, you want to talk about fascism. And remember, we talked about the Obamacare, the insurance companies on, with automobiles. These are all forms of fascism. And I'm not talking about just a slight form. They are it by definition, fascism. Forcing you to buy insurance for your car, if you, whether you want it or you don't want it. And then if you don't buy it, penalizing you and even throwing you in jail. So the private insurance companies use the state, the strong arm of the state, the power of the state to enforce their, their uh, unconstitutional mandate that you buy something for private company. That goes with Obamacare, exactly the same thing. And then what this CEO is saying here, uh, what Smith is saying is just uh, the more of that same fascism. You want to know what fascism is? There it is. It's not with these idiots out here, these dumb asses, these leftist, uh, anti-American, constitutional phobic pervert supremacists. That's not what they think fascism is. They just made that definition up. Just made it up. Created an old organization that's going out there. And what are they doing? Same same thing that Smith's doing. They're going after your First Amendment rights to express yourself, to freely associate, assemble, and to express yourself without any worry about anybody being able to violate your life, liberty, or property for doing so, and then forcing you to do something under threat, duress, or coercion. That's what we're dealing with here. So when I read the news like this and I read about Obamacare and I read about all this stuff, the reason why they're not getting rid of Obamacare right now, and it's just as simple as can be, is that it's the corporations, it's the insurance companies. Who in the hell do you think wrote the law for crying out loud? They don't want to lose this free ride. Wouldn't you love to have a business where the government forces customers upon you? I know I sure would if I were you know, a dictator someone of that sort. But I like the free enterprise system. I like going out here and, uh, you know, uh, competing in the marketplace, you know, to giving the best service, the best product uh, that uh, money can buy and be able to better myself because of that and then duplicate myself so that I can become, you know, uh, whatever I decide I want to be. You know, that's all been removed. And it's been done through this fascist movement that's going on within within our uh, republic right now. And all of these things, these are acts of insurrection, rebellion, and treason. When the, uh, when the uh, when Congress colludes with uh, corporate interests, like the uh, insurance companies dealing with health care, that in itself, they're conspiring to overthrow the United States Constitution. They're using these corporations 
they are bowing down to them and no longer serving the constituent, you and me, the ones that hired them to go there to represent us, to represent us under the law. Instead, now they're representing the corporations outside of the law. And the reason why they're getting away with it is because the American public is too dumb. They have no idea what's being done to them. They have no idea. And when someone like me comes along and starts, you know, pointing this out, that makes you very uncomfortable, super uncomfortable. Oh, my God, this guy's talking that I'm a, I'm a sovereign. I'm some, I actually have a responsibility in this game that I may have to go out there and uh, participate. I may have to say no to a government agent when it comes to my door when violating my constitutional rights. I may have to face going to jail. I may have to fight that in court. But see, I don't want to do that. I want to give that to somebody else to handle. Well, that's why we're where we're at. They're not going to handle it. If you don't take care of your own house, nobody else is going to do it for you. And that's the problem we're, we're at right now is that we have a, we have a, a dumbed-down populace. They have absolutely no idea what their heritage is they know nothing about their history and what they think they know is fabricated and it's a complete lie just like Karl Marx said in the communist manifesto you got to create that lie and feed it to the people and we discussed that on the last current events now I realize I've gone a little bit uh, further than I, I actually wanted to on this but I think it's very important because this thing of fascism what it really is and how it really works and where it is in our, in our country today is not being talked about by anyone, not anyone, anywhere on any network TV program, radio program, any alternate media, any independent media. Nobody's talking about this. They just don't. In fact, it, when, you know, I've, I've been up here and I've talked about you know, Trump violating the Constitution when it comes to war, and I attacked him. But then if, if I see something he's done right, I'll, I'll go ahead and point that out as well. I'm not here to, to take sides in this stupid uh, false left-right paradigm of uh, Democrats and Republicans with anybody that's got even, even an IQ over 60 can see that this is all a pre-programmed, uh, show that is that is one party, two names, which I recall the Demo Republican Nazis. It, it, see that this this whole thing is just a it's just a rigged game, and to think that anybody would sit here and still play this game, knowing this, you see it for yourself. You saw how, how the Democratic Party, you know, screwed that uh, that idiot Bernie Sanders out out of his uh, nomination for the Democratic Party. I mean, it, it was just rigged right down the line, and people saw it. They even complained about it. But what, what, has anything changed? No. To say that everybody that was involved, every crime that was committed, everything, they're still out there walking around because the system is broke. There is no United States of America anymore. The Constitution, the contract between we the people and government has been breached. There is nothing that our public servants do that we've hired them to do that is constitutional, not one thing. You name me one thing that they're doing in Congress that is constitutional, and I'll, I'll, stand, I'll be stand corrected. I'll get right on the air and say, yeah, well, it's corrected. They're not doing any of it. And when you have a contract with somebody and they have certain terms and conditions within that contract that they're supposed to keep and they're supposed to perform and they're not performing that, that is called a breach of contract. And once the contract has been breached, there is no contract. And the Constitution has been completely breached. There is no United States of America. The people that are up there in Congress, every single one of them, the one that's sitting in the Oval Office right now, every single one of them, they are not. They are not. Let me repeat. This is not our legitimate government at all get that through your head out here sitting there saying oh well trump's doing some good things over here blah, 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 blah. that's so superfluous there isn't there isn't anything they can do because there is no goddamn government got it and that's why i did the show on secession 
There's nothing to secede from. The states can't secede from a union that does not exist. Whatever this is up here, whatever this government is, it is not the legitimate government of the United States of America. It is an imposter. And the American people don't know that because they have been educated, programmed not to know it. And then when somebody like myself comes up and demonstrates it, shows you the law, shows you the intent of the framers, reads directly from Supreme Court cases, then I am a conspiracy theorist and I'm a liar. I couldn't possibly know. Oh, I don't have a college degree. Oh, my God, I don't have a college degree. Therefore, I could never be an authority on anything. Nor could I have an intelligent uh, opinion. I study everything. I've been studying it since I was in my 20s. I don't need a goddamn uh, college degree. What do I need one for? The only, the only reason anybody goes to get one is because they're looking for a better job. I don't need a damn job. I'll create my own destiny. Thank you. I'm a free man. And that's all the government full system is about, all the way up through the colleges. And the colleges are nothing but lunatic asylums today. I, I don't know what the hell's going on up there. But that's all they ever do is they train you for one thing. They train you for a job. They start you up. Oh, you got to get a high school graduation if you want to get a good job. Oh, you got to go to college to get a degree, get a better job. And blah, 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 blah. But never once do they ever say, hey, I'm going to teach you how you can go out and be self-reliant, and create your own destiny, build your own business, build your own future. When you hear that, never, because you're not supposed to know that. You're not supposed to understand. They'll tell you ignorance of the law is no excuse, but yet you, no one's out here teaching you the law so that you can't be ignorant. I guess that when they say ignorance is bliss, I tell you what, it's, it's bliss in the United States. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and I, I haven't forgot about the uh, Sixth Amendment thing. I have my... Uh, my uh, show prepared. I just want to review a few things, make sure that I got all my uh, I's dotted, my T's crossed, and then I'll get that one out. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue doing these little current event things because I think that it's really important as we, those of you that are sticking with me and learning, you know, your constitutional rights and learning a little bit about your American history, you know, then you'll be able to start seeing some of this stuff when you're watching TV and see how, how uh, the uh, the media lies to you and twists things and everything else. When you see it, it's just, it's like coming out, the movie The Matrix, it's like coming out of The Matrix. Once you take that red pill and you come out, you can't go back in. You really can't go back in because it's the, once the illusion has been uh, exposed, like uh, The Wizard of Oz, when Toto pulled back the curtain and there he was, you know. You couldn't pull that curtain back. There was nobody standing in the room was going to buy that crap anymore. And once it's been discovered, you, you just can't buy it anymore. And that's what uh, that's what I'm attempting to do here. We attempted to do it years ago uh, when we did seminars traveling around. And basically what I found to be true is that this information, which is so valid and so important, uh, especially if you want to save this country from the directions it's going, and also save yourself so you understand, you know, who you are and, and where you came from and what your heritage is and what really happened, you know, uh, as this as country started to, to, to develop and, and grow. You know, that's what, that's what this is all about. But you see, people, who you got to want it. If you don't want it, you're not going to listen to what I've got to say because it's going to be boring and it's, it's not going to be interesting to you. But, you, but you'd sit there and rather go to the coffee shop and argue, you know, who's better, a Democrat or a Republican, and uh, whether fluoride uh, eats holes in your brains or it doesn't. But you're not going to you're not going to sit and ever get involved and understand uh, what to do. And as as long as you um, the people want to remain ignorant, they're going to not they're going to lose all their freedom. Anyway, um. With that said, uh, I really appreciate you tuning in uh, to this episode, and uh, uh, we'll be doing this again soon. Remember, if you're politically correct, then you're legally wrong. And if you're not part of the solution, 
then you are the problem. I'm the Ghetto Man, and thank you for watching.